All right, guys, so we're going to do the current to pressure transducer lab. So what we're trying to mimic here is having a, a current signal coming from the control room out in the field to this coil, the transducer. A transducer is just another name for something that changes one energy into another. In this case, it's changing current into pressure. We're going to have 4 to 20 milliamps flowing on here, and we're going to have that going into the coil, and the coil is going to take the 4 to 20 milliamps and change it to 3 to 15 psi. That 3 to 15 psi would be going to a large control valve, and that would push down on the spring and it would open and close the valve with just a small amount of pressure. Okay, so we have the regulator here. This guy is the current to pressure transducer, and this guy is what we're going to look at for our final pressure. Okay, this right here, in other labs, we're going to use this as a DP cell, a differential pressure cell. Today, all we're going to do is use this as a 4 to 20 milliamp source. You'll notice that this guy has 4 to 20 milliamps that'll punch out. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the span knob completely clockwise, and that will allow the zero knob to be used from 4 to 20 milliamps output. And we're going to use that current and push it into this coil here. So this is only going to be used for a current source today. On this transducer, you'll notice that they have a zero and a span potentiometer. I'm going to give you guys the smallest screwdriver on the face of the earth in order to change those two potentiometers. If you try and crank on those guys, they will rip one of the pins off the board and the transducer will be useless. So take your time. Um, if you want to be here for a long amount of time doing the lab, then go ahead and turn those potentiometers 30 to 40 times. You'll be here forever trying to recalibrate it. These guys are already pretty much calibrated before you walk in. So there's just a fine calibration that needs to be done for this lab. Uh, in order to decrease, we're going to turn those guys clockwise. And in order to increase, we're going to go counterclockwise. Okay, so the things that we need today would be the digital vol voltmeter, the pressure transmitter, the board. Uh, you'll need a, uh, a long pneumatic hose to go <coughs> to the boards to allow that pressure to come to this board here on the table. Okay, so once I turn on the, the pressure here, you'll notice that the gauge just increased. And if I increase the pressure on the board, then I have more pressure available here on my control board. Okay, so based on this wiring diagram that I've given you guys, we're going to need to take the 24 volts from this power supply here, and we're going to provide 24 volts to the pressure transmitter. So we'll do positive to positive here, negative to negative, so that's our 24 volts. You'll notice that I'm not turning on power until everything's ready. If you want to blow the fuse quickly, then turn the power on while you're doing all this and you'll blow the fuse and you'll <coughs> be wondering why things aren't working. Next thing we need to do is we've got to take the black lead and we've got to go from the black lead on the transducer into the 4 to 20. So you'll notice that that just pushes right into that terminal there. Then the white wire, regardless of what I've soldered on to the end here, the white wire here is going to go to the meter. You'll notice that the meter is on the 300 and the common terminals because we're looking at a 4 to 20 milliamp current. These are perfect because you can push the test lead into the back of that terminal. And now to finish off the circuit, we're going to bring the common back to the negative of the 24 volts. Again, the power is off before I turn this to select DC current. Otherwise, if the power is on and you turn that, you will blow the fuse. Okay, so now that all that's on, I can now turn the current on. And at this point, there's 17 and a half milliamps flowing in the circuit. Okay, keep that isolated there. So, the next thing that we're going to have to do, now that everything's set up, is we're going to have to set the zero and the span. So again, this is just a current source. So I'm going to use the zero knob and reduce the current. I'm not touching the span knob here. Just using this knob to control the amount of current flowing in the circuit. And so I'm going to bring this down to 4 milliamps. 
Now again, if I keep going down, the meter doesn't change. So bring it up until you see the meter just bump and then bring it back down. So that's essentially four milliamps. Okay? Now, this one's already pre-calibrated. So you can see that four milliamps is giving me three PSI out. If it was not calibrated, so say it was off a touch, you can use the zero knob and adjust the zero so four milliamps gives you three PSI. Once the zero is set, then you can go set the high end of the range. So you're going to go up to 20 milliamps and you're hoping that 20 milliamps is going to give you 15 PSI out. Okay, so again, 20 milliamps giving me 15 PSI out. If that one was off, I could adjust the span. So if it was off just a touch, using the span potentiometer, readjust so that you have 20 milliamps giving you 15 PSI. As soon as you adjust the zero, you screw up the span. As soon as you adjust the span, you screw up the zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back down and recalibrate two or three times. This one is already pre-calibrated, so it should be fairly close. So again, we're going to four milliamps. Okay, so four milliamps is giving me three PSI. Beauty. Now I'm going to go up to 20 milliamps and just make sure that I'm still getting the 15 PSI. Looks good.